Okay, so for, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ranjini and Mahesh uh, for uh, inviting me to give this give uh, this talk here. And uh, so today's talk uh, will be will be mostly on the soft, and the living part uh, is missing. So there will be one or two slides where there will be living content. But apart from that, it will be mostly on the uh, soft uh, part of this uh, soft matter. So the, today, the, the focus will be on understanding uh, uh, correlations in glassy systems. And uh, in the morning, Andrea gave a very nice introduction to the field of uh, glasses and the physics of glass transition and the issues that uh, the people are uh, struggling with and to understand uh, the slowing down and then subsequently, uh, uh, also Sarika talked about various aspects of how to understand the correlation between structure and the dynamics. So, so my goal here will be to uh, suggest you various ways one can compute those correlations. And uh, with the intention that uh, some of this can be implemented in experiments, including molecular glasses. And uh, so this is the, so this, uh, there will be some part which is done on uh, liquid uh, glycerol, super cool liquid glycerol, and uh, how one can compute uh, correlation on those systems. So this, this is the work which done uh, uh, by two of my uh, former PhD students, Ras Das and uh, Bhanu uh, Prasad Bhomik. And uh, Kula, an experiment is done in group of uh, T. N. Narayanan in T. I. F. R. Hyderabad, uh, along with his uh, postdoc uh, Anand. <coughs> so, again, ah. so uh, sorry to show you the same uh, picture once more, but <laughs> I can actually quickly skip it. Uh, but uh, for sake of it, uh, just to highlight that uh, so we are uh, uh, trying to understand the physics of uh, slowing down. And why it's so problematic? Problematic because uh, if you look at viscosity as a function of inverse temperature, the relaxation time or viscosity can change from uh, 10 to the minus uh, 2 to 10 to the 14, which is 16 orders of magnitude. And uh, if you look, if you uh, look at uh, uh, various structural quantities, typically what is looked at is a pair correlation function, and you see uh, there is very small changes. And Sarika uh, gave a an interesting talk to tell you that even the small changes can pick up uh, the changes in the dynamics. <clears throat> but uh, uh, the main problem will be that uh, it, it will be interesting if some of this can be done in, in molecular uh, liquids. So, at the relaxation changes by 16 orders of magnitude. In more, uh, most of the computer simulations and colloidal experiment, this uh, variation in relaxation time is only 3 to 4, maybe 5 at best even if you, if you push yourself too much. If you are too far, then I think you cannot. So why want to, why you would like to study this uh, glassy systems? Because they are, they are uh, in, in our life, they are ubiquitous in our life. So various uh, materials that you see, that we use in daily life, they are of uh, glassy uh, nature. For example, metallic glasses are there in your iPhone. And uh, then you have emulsions, colloids, uh, this uh, glacier, and when, when you have basically avalanches in the glacier, they can be very catastrophic. So understanding their uh, dynamical and mechanical properties are very, very important. <coughs> and so one more aspect. So another aspect which recently came up is uh, when you take this material to a very small uh, length scales, uh, there, uh, there are a lot of applications. For example, various uh, nano moldings are done using amorphous uh, metals and they have advantages because when you mold, uh, mold them and uh, liquid to solid phase, uh, then there is no jump in uh, density. So you don't get uh, uh, defective surfaces. So your uh, molded uh, design is almost ready to use. And the other part is that uh, this material sometimes can be much stronger than their equivalent crystalline parts. So you can actually form various uh, pillars and they will have a lot of surface to do various uh, chemical reactions. So for catalysis, uh, these have been recently used. But at the same time, you have to ask these questions whether uh, when you go to these very small uh, length scales, are their mechanical properties similar or not? And uh, we have done uh, interesting studies along those, those lines. But uh, today's talk is on the dynamical aspect and not, and not on the mechanical aspect of it. <clears throat> Just to briefly tell you that uh, the physics of these uh, glasses and how they break, apart from how they form, 
uh, also is very difficult because in crystal you can uh, identify defects as uh, Rajesh uh, showed, uh, but in the glasses it's very very difficult to find out, and uh, and then uh, then it's very difficult to find out uh, how they break and uh, and also shear band formations and, and all of that is something which uh, is, is an ongoing research directions, which uh, <clears throat> for the sake of I think uh, time I will not. Uh, yeah, I think this is go into it. So, in the dynamical aspect which will be the focus of this uh, today's talk, uh, it will be to look, look at and understand uh, in, in, in a way of why relaxation time grows so rapidly and is there certain quantities that you can compute and associate uh, with that relaxation time. Okay? Uh, so, those who are familiar with critical phenomena will immediately say, oh this is very similar to critical uh, slowing down, so why do not you uh, compute various correlation function and compute. Uh, relax compute uh, growing scales, length scales. So, this has been the approach that uh, we have been uh, taken for quite some time and over last I think now uh, 10 years or so. So, there are significant progress made to compute various correlation length. And the question remains whether uh, they will be eventually useful uh, to understand the glass physics or not uh, uh, is something which uh, we have to still wait, but it is always important that we should be able to compute them and compute them in uh, molecular glasses where the relaxation time changes very rapidly, not only in computer uh, simulations and uh, colloidal systems. So, there is one more complication associated with this physics is that uh, it seems there are two different length scales which are possible. One is a static length scale which will be which is related to uh, relaxation time and, uh, and probably there is one more or not probably there is the one more dynamic length scales and these two may or may not be correlated. Okay, so, it is not clear and so, what is the relation between a static and a dynamic length scale is a question which is still very fuzzy. But it is uh, very clear that uh, one needs to introduce uh, certain uh, growing scales to understand the physics. So, let me briefly talk about uh, the various theoretical uh, efforts to understand the physics of this and one of them is the famous mode coupling theory which talks about only growing dynamical heterogeneity length scales and through that length scale one can uh, compute uh, this should work. Yeah. So, so, this uh, mode coupling theory suggests that there are uh, there is probably no static uh, correlation length and your relaxation time should be related directly directly to the dynamic heterogeneity length scale and uh, this length scale can be computed using uh, mod slightly modified version of this mode coupling theory called inhomogeneous mode coupling theory and uh, Saroj is one of the expert who is sitting uh, in the front if you have a question related to that you should ask him. And then another set of uh, theories called dynamical facilitation theory where also, it suggests that uh, there is no finite temperature uh, uh, divergence of any static correlation and it is, but, but there are uh, there are growing dynamic length scales. <coughs> so, this there are experimental studies done by uh, Rajesh Ganpati's group and uh, showed that uh, within certain uh, temperature window you see uh, facilitation uh, dynamics. Then there are uh, thermodynamic approaches, uh, one of the oldest one is this Adam Gibbs theory which suggests that uh, there are static correlations and this uh, static correlation comes up with the natural correlation length which at some point we uh, computed and showed that some of the relaxation time data can be understood quite well and I will uh, come here, I will really dis discuss this part uh, once more. An extension of, uh, of this theory uh, uh, is this random first order transition theory which is uh, one of the celebrated theories of glass physics which clearly suggests that there is a static uh, correlation length and it has to diverge and it assumes also that uh, there is a finite temperature glass transition. <coughs> and there are significant amount of work done uh, to compute those uh, correlation. Then there is another uh, set of uh, theories which suggest a slightly different approach. So, there the, this is the one of the, the earliest one is this called sobbing model which says that there are local cages and and this local cage has an elastic background and how this cage and elasticity uh, plays uh, uh, a role uh, that determines all the real, uh, dynamical uh, features. And so, these are uh, very early works in 1957 and later by J. Pedair uh, did this uh, review of modern physics as a detailed discussion on that. 
an extension but uh, with uh, certain crucial changes in the theory of uh, this local cage plast elasticity is developed by uh, Kenneth Swayzer group uh, which, uh, which is named uh, this ECNLE theory elastically uh, collective nonlinear Langevin equation theory which uh, clearly uh, which explicitly takes into account local caging plus elastic barrier and uh, and he was able to show that this uh, total barrier uh, grows with a decreasing uh, temperature or increasing supercooling but uh, one need not invoke directly a static correlation this uh, growth of uh, uh, elastic contribution is sufficient to describe uh, the slowing down and but the, the question remains whether uh, local caging plus elastic barrier whether the uh, combination of these two can also give a static correlation length. I'm not going into the details of those and if you are interested we can discuss about it. So to my view that uh, uh, what I feel that this uh, theory does not rule out the growth of uh, such a static correlation length. But it's clear that uh, all of these various theories uh, suggest that there are uh, correlation length which are uh, growing and uh, the question is uh, can we compute them uh, in various systems. So, so the, I will briefly talk about this uh, dynamic heterogeneity which uh, Rajesh showed and uh, which tells us that <clears throat> so the, if you look at uh, basically uh, assembly of uh, colloidal particles or even you can do it in computer simulations, uh, you can uh, track various particles and you see that there are uh, a set of uh, particles or cluster of particles which uh, move much faster than the rest of it and, uh, and the dynamics is very, very heterogeneous. So one can compute and quantify this uh, by computing uh, the four point correlation functions which Andrea talked about in the morning, Oops, I skipped it ah. and uh, so, so the, the, this quantity is this uh, chi 4 which is basically a standard deviation of your two point density correlation function. If you compute it then you see that uh, as you uh, go to lower and lower temperature the chi 4 uh, peak goes up systematically and one can do a very detailed scaling analysis to prove that uh, there is this uh, growing correlation length but this is dynamic in nature. <clears throat> and uh, subsequently there are also experiment done to compute uh, this uh, dynamic correlation length uh, in this uh, in 2005 where they looked at uh, slightly different quantity, it's not the chi 4 but uh, it's, uh, it's basically response of two point correlation functions. Uh, uh, under under a field and the field is basically a small change in temperature. So you can actually compute uh, this quantity where x is basically your change in temperature. So if you are at particular temperature you can compute your correlation function then you change your temperature a little bit and recompute your correlation function once more and you ask what is the effect of this temperature change on your correlation function and the derivative gives you uh, some, some, some sort of susceptibility which we call uh, chi t and one can show that chi t is a, a lower bound of chi 4. So this growth of this chi t also suggests that there is a dynamic correlation which is growing. This is done in uh, super cool glycerol and this is also repeated in colloidal experiments <coughs> and people and, and they were able to uh, predict that uh, close to the temperature where one can uh, do these studies uh, the correlation length is typically between 5 and 6 which is not very large but, uh, but still uh, significant. So then the other uh, part which uh, we also found and already in 2009 in our paper where we looked at relaxation time as a function of system size and uh, if you try to understand this feature and try to collapse this data so which I did it here this you cannot do using the dynamic length scale. So this suggests that uh, the dynamic length scale is probably not uh, causally related to the relaxation time. And you can actually plot uh, the relaxation time as a function of all system size and the four point susceptibility for various system size and they do not show a strong correlation. And but on the other hand if you compute uh, uh, certain uh, compute the configurational entropy following this Adam Gibbs theory then you can show that relaxation time and its, its system size dependence can be completely understood uh, using uh, configurational entropy which is a static quantity. And you can also do a scaling analysis to find out a static correlation. And so this is a variation of the static correlation which is very minute but there is something and this is the dynamic length scale and this says that uh, there is a strong decoupling particularly uh, in this kind of systems and uh, 
and also maybe uh, for uh, those who are computing uh, the softness parameter, this will be an interesting uh, check to find out uh, whether the softness itself can predict uh, the system size dependence. Because, uh, because in system size dependence, you do not have to vary anything else. All of the parameters are same and you are only changing the size of it. And, uh, but it's very clear that for all glass forming liquid you take, you have the system size dependence and that dependence can only be explained by introducing a static correlation length. So, so we have uh, uh, written a nice uh, review article uh, quite some time ago and maybe you can have a look at it. So now coming back uh, to the static correlation, so there are uh, various ways one can compute it and uh, this is not an exhaustive list but uh, one of the most uh, famous one is this called point to set correlation function. So this is related to the random first order transition theory and this was uh, computed already in 2008 to show that indeed one can compute uh, say static correlation. I will briefly uh, describe this part. And then there is something called patch repetition length scale uh, which is to find out whether there are repeated patterns in a given configuration which is not easy to do but, uh, uh, but Sose and uh, Levin could uh, find out that indeed there is some uh, static uh, correlation or the static uh, motifs one can uh, find out. Then one can look at uh, the uh, potential energy landscape and find out uh, how the curvature of the minima changes as a function of temperature that we are able to show is related to the static length scale. You can do finite size scaling analysis of the relaxation time which I showed which also is related to the static length scale and recently we have uh, also came up with an interesting uh, way to compute this length scale using elongated probe particle. <coughs> Some of that you can find it in this uh, reviews that we uh, wrote. And, uh, so, so just to uh, briefly tell you what is this point to set length scale and tell you why uh, it is so difficult to compute. So what do you do, you typically uh, take a configuration, freeze uh, some part of the configuration leaving only this uh, purple region which is uh, dynamic and you ask this question whether this dynamic region will be able to decorrelate by itself and what is the size of this region where uh, the decorrelation will happen. That gives you the static correlation and it is uh, clear uh, that this is not easy to do and it has a lot of technical challenges and obviously this cannot be done in uh, molecular glasses. Okay. So in an experiment you cannot go and freeze certain particles and try to look for only local regions. So this is even though this is an uh, interesting correlation function this cannot be implemented in molecular glass experiments. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I am still doing reasonably fine with uh, Time. So I will uh, briefly tell about the recent way we have uh, came up with uh, to compute the same correlation function. What we do? We take uh, the simulation box and insert elongated particle and look at only this probe particle, nothing else. And ask this question uh, or uh, ask uh, and look at their uh, basically rotational and translational dynamics. And you can quantify those uh, by something called non-normal parameter, non-Gaussian type parameter for the rods and both in 2D and 3D uh, the expressions are different uh, that you can find uh, in this paper by Jane and uh, the KL Sebastian from IIC Bangalore. So there is an exact calculation done. So you can use this uh, two expression to compute the rotational uh, non-Gaussianity in, in, in the dynamics <coughs> and what we could uh, show that uh, if you do it for various uh, temperature as well as various rod length. Then you can come up with uh, an, an interesting scaling analysis which will tell you what is the length scale and this is the living part of it. This is uh, this was tested in uh, usual glass forming liquid but you can also extend it to non-equilibrium active glasses and we are able to show that uh, even in active glasses uh, this probe method works very well and it captures the correlation length. So, the, the, so this is the comparison of the correlation length that the green dots are uh, green squares are obtained using this probe method and the black circles are obtained using all other methods that I talked about before and that you can find it in this uh, recently uh, published PNS paper. And you can also study uh, the static properties by uh, looking at uh, first passage time distribution of uh, rod like molecule and we are able to show that uh, once you go to lower and lower temperature then uh, the first passage time distribution picks up an extra wing at short time scale and if you can correctly quantify this that will uh, give you the static correlation. 
So similarly, you can look at, uh, it's uh, apart from rotational dynamics, you can look at translational dynamics and uh, the, the same uh, and various analysis will give you exactly the same uh, static link scale. So this is uh, very interesting to see that a proparticle dynamics, both rotation and translation can be described completely using two length scale. One is dynamic and the other one is static length scale, depending on the quantity that you are computing. And uh, this is uh, remarkable to see that uh, just these two length scale can uh, describe uh, such a complex uh, phenomena. Okay. So now let me come back uh, to molecular glass uh, experiments. And uh, so this is one of the first attempt to compute uh, static correlation in supercooled glycerol. And if you read uh, the title, it says that they computed fifth order nonlinear susceptibility. And you can imagine that uh, the, the, the noise between first order and the fifth order will be so large that it will be very difficult. So one has to come up with an extremely sophisticated uh, method to compute uh, this fifth order correlation function. And this was done in this uh, paper and they were able to show that there is a growth of static correlation. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I will do it. Uh, So let me uh, now pro, uh, tell you uh, some interesting way to compute the same length scale. And uh, so this is the, this was the title of uh, the talk. So this is where the main talk starts now. So this was, so until now I was actually giving you some background information and the overview of the field. So the idea is that I want to look at uh, response of the system with and without uh, in the presence of some uh, pinned particle. Okay, so what I do, so this is an original system and I compute relaxation time or the co various correlation functions and, and then I pinned few particles, the black dots are the pinned particles. So they cannot uh, have a dynamics or they can, they can have very slow dynamics compared to the rest of it. So if you do it, then obviously your relaxation or the correlation function will decay uh, slower and, uh, and then you can actually quantify this effect uh, very nicely using the same static link scale. And uh, so the, the next part of the discussion is to uh, convince you that indeed this effect of pin particle on your dynamics is related to the static correlation link. And in, in, uh, on the other hand, you can actually, uh, uh, yes. Uh, what is the meaning of pin particle? Do you increase the mass of those particles? No, these are uh, by hand uh, frozen in this case. Uh, you said they are like uh, slow dynamics like you can have a slightly different thing like which I'm going to come that's called soft pin particle uh, and there you don't have to freeze anything. So they will automatically do the same and same thing. And this is the reason why I can do it in experiment. Okay. Your key definition was excluding, the spin. excluding those pin particles. Yeah, because they, they are not going to move. Yeah. So you just basically look at uh, the effect of rest of the dynamics uh, and uh, then you see that if you increase pin particle relaxation becomes slower and slower. You can compute this quantity. So there is the effect of uh, co uh, pin particle on the correlation function and you take the, the, the limit. So there is this derivative and uh, this derivative exists. So that means that uh, it's not that uh, this quantity changes if you uh, change the, the pinning concentration. So, so this, this uh, so some of this test I will uh, show you just to prove that this is an well-defined uh, susceptibility. And if you do not exclude, you have to saturate. You have to you will saturate, yeah. So, so this is uh, the, the study, this was a numerical uh, studies done on uh, various uh, model glass forming liquid, mostly Cobb-Anderson co liquids and in two dimensional is a, slide, is a variant of that. And what we find that as you change uh, temperature, as you go to lower and lower temperature, this uh, susceptibility that I uh, computed, this uh, derivative of uh, this two point function that grows. Okay. Excused. Okay, so you can do it, I can, in, in the meantime, I will talk. So, so this, uh, the peak height grows uh, systematically uh, with decreasing temperature, which uh, tells you that uh, there must be uh, something happening, some correlation must be developing. 
and uh, this uh, you may feel that oh this is strikingly similar to chi4 so why are you then uh, saying that this is going to pick up a static length scale so so i'm going to argue those and so this is the scaling theory that i want to uh, propose which will uh, relate uh, the speak of this uh, pinning susceptibility to a static correlation so the idea is that if you have a pin particle and if you assume that there is a static correlation which exists then the pin particle being slow or uh, static is going to uh, disturb its neighborhood and make the particle slow as well so if you can compute relaxation time uh, radially averaged around this pin particle then you should see there that uh, close to the pin particle relaxation time will be larger and then it systematically goes uh, to the bulk value okay and uh, if this is controlled by one static correlation length then this uh, data set you should be able to collapse using this correlation length okay so assuming that this decay uh, how relaxation changes from uh, the pin site to the bulk is controlled by a static correlation and indeed that you can actually do so this is what uh, we have done here and so what you are assuming now that uh, this relaxation time as a function of distance from the pin particle uh, is a scaling function of this i do not need to know the details of uh, how this function look as long as this is a scaling function uh, i am i will be fine to derive the final scaling relation so so once we have uh, that then we can compute the total uh, relaxation time of the system with the c concentration of pin particle okay so that is this excess uh, slow down here plus the bulk and you can uh, do the algebra and to show that uh, this uh, relaxation time uh, with the c uh, fraction of pin particle will be nothing but uh, the bare relaxation time uh, uh, with uh, with a uh, with a uh, the factor which is 1 plus kappa is a, is a basically a constant which doesn't depend on anything else and in, including temperature with a correlation uh, with, with the pinning concentration and the static correlation length okay so this suggests that if you take a ratio of tau alpha ct divided by tau alpha and take a log then that will be directly related to your uh, correlation length uh, correlated volume so so if you can compute uh, this and you know this information then your all the data you should be able to collapse using a static correlation length so that's the analysis that i am going to uh, do okay so now to coming back to the pinning susceptibility so pinning susceptibility is related to derivative of two point function so you can also uh, do this math so the the the, the pinning uh, this uh, two point function you can actually approximate uh, at the long time scale as a stretched exponential decay where relaxation time explicitly appear here now you take a derivative with respect to the pin particle that gives you the pinning susceptibility and you can show that this will be uh, nothing but a derivative of your relaxation time and i already uh, su suggested that uh, there is a scaling uh, answers that you can take for how relaxation time depends on pinning concentration and if you plug that back here then you get that uh, the pinning susceptibility height or the peak height of the pinning susceptibility should be directly uh, related to the correlated volume and nothing else so if you can compute uh, your uh, relaxation profile uh, in presence in in absence of uh, the spin particle and you take the numerical derivative the peak height is directly your uh, static volume so this depends on whether you are doing a hard pin or uh, or a soft pin so so hard pin uh, turns out that uh, uh, you get a slightly different uh, static length scale which is not exactly the same uh, point to set length scale So that that the difference is uh, actually minute. The left hand side, right? This. Huh? Yeah. So. No, no, but yeah. So this is uh, cut and paste mistake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so some so similar uh, scaling answers you can actually uh, come up with that we have uh, done with this paper with uh, Chandan some time ago. Uh, if you start from random first order transition theory and how. Configurational entropy gets affected with your uh, pinning, so that also gives you exactly the same uh, scaling function. So this suggests that uh, there is uh, something which is uh, uh, very robust about this uh, scaling uh, property. <coughs> so one can also uh, derive uh, a stricter condition on the, this uh, pinning susceptibility. So the the condition is that if I now compute the susceptibility chi p. and find out at what pinning fraction i will get the maximal value 
then I can find out uh, that by taking a derivative of pinning susceptibility with respect to the concentration C. And I get a differential equation which is uh, given here. And you can solve it, okay. But if it turns out that your uh, pinning susceptibility does not depend on your pinning concentration anywhere, then, uh, then you can rewrite it as this, okay. So it gives you exactly uh, the same scaling answers that I uh, started with. So this uh, tells you that uh, the pinning susceptibility uh, can be checked very well whether uh, your correlation function is, is the susceptibility is the correct susceptibility or not. For example, instead of uh, pin particle, if I take something else as my uh, variable, for example, temperature or a density, will I get back the same thing? The answer is no. Okay, so I will uh, show you that uh, if you take uh, derivative of your correlation function, two point correlation function with either temperature or density, then it does not give you the static correlation. Okay, so that gives you a dynamic length skill. So the detail you can actually find it in this uh, soft matter paper. And uh, so this has been tested, uh, we computed this uh, peak height uh, and in two dimension you take square root of uh, this and in 3D you take uh, one third of it and you can compare with the length scale. This length scale are the pinning length scale for random pinning. And in the next slide, I will talk about a slightly different version of the same concept where you don't have to explicitly pin the particle, but still you can get back uh, the static correlation. And that's the, oops, sorry, I have to still uh, say a few more things before I jump there. So the other thing that I is important to check whether uh, the derivative exists or not. For example, when you take numerical derivative, the correlation function, you can compute with the change in pinning concentration and that will be in your hand. So you can choose some number, I can choose some number. But this two should give us the same uh, outcome. And this is indeed true. I can uh, take uh, the changes in pinning concentration to be uh, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% and it gives you exactly the same number. Okay, so that means the derivative exists. So this is the correlation function that I am computing which is insensitive of any of these uh, details. <clears throat> and also this correlation function picks at a time which is uh, proportional to the structural relaxation time. That's also very important. Otherwise, uh, uh, this argument will not be true. Okay. So there are various checks one can uh, do to actually uh, find out whether uh, this proposal is valid or not. And in the simulation, we have uh, done it very rigorously. Now the question is that, uh, so I was uh, talking about uh, using this in experiment, but I can do it in colloidal experiment. Uh, I cannot do it, but Rajesh can do it. So you can freeze certain particle and compute it. <clears throat> but if I try to use it for any other uh, system, for example, molecular glasses, it will be impossible. You cannot uh, freeze molecules. So this is uh, beyond. But then we can, uh, we thought of extending the same idea and uh, uh, to suggest that instead of pin particle, if I introduce uh, particles which are bigger in diameter, so those, uh, so a bigger particle will have uh, much slower uh, diffusion constant. And if you have uh, diffusion constant uh, contrast between your medium and this particle, which is factor of 10, then you are uh, doing very well because on the time scale of your medium relaxation time, this pin particle or the, so the heavy bigger size particle will be effectively pin particle. And so this concept, uh, we used it in this uh, simulation and we could uh, redo the full analysis and, and compute the static correlation and, com and compare it with the uh, point to set correlation length. And it, uh, it, uh, it, it matches remarkably well with all the model uh, that we have studied. There are at least three, four model systems that we looked at. <clears throat> and we also did all the relevant checks. For example, if I, instead of uh, the spinning concentration, if I vary significantly, do I get the same number or not? And it turns out we do get the same number. And uh, so this is the, uh, in 2018, uh, Rajesh Ganpati also found out that there are, uh, if you look at uh, the dynamics of various colloidal particles, so there are, then there are certain particles which are static over a time scale, which is at least uh, 10 tau alpha, which is very large. And you can actually uh, pinpoint them and ask the same question, okay? So, so they, they studied it for both uh, pinned by laser pinning and the one which is soft pin, and they, they were able to compute and show directly that uh, this correlation uh, from the pin side gives you back the static correlation. Okay, 
So then uh, the, the thing that we are proposing is not uh, really ad hoc and this is already uh, tested in uh, a colloidal experiment for sure. So just to complete the story, we again uh, went back and repeated the same analysis that uh, Rajesh did and computed uh, this uh, quanti quantity called uh, QC, which is uh, basically occupation uh, density at each grid point. So what you do, you just take the configuration, uh, make grids, and, uh, and each uh, grid you ask the question, is there a particle or not? If there is no particle, then Ni is 0, and if there is a particle, then Ni is 1. So you make the grid small enough such that at any point in time you cannot have more than one particle. And this quantity you can compute and uh, compute uh, and, and ask what is the long time limit of this. And in the long time limit it actually uh, saturates to a number. So if you compute, uh, if you plot that as a function of uh, the radius from the spin site, then you can show that there is, uh, they actually decay exponentially and this exponential uh, gives you back the static correlation again. Okay, so this is, this is the, exactly the picture that I needed uh, to validate uh, my scaling arguments. At the same point, we also computed uh, the pure two-point correlation function, G of R, starting from this uh, pin site. And, uh, and the correlation length that you compute uh, is, is here, and it doesn't grow. So there must be some sort of uh, many-body effects, and maybe elastic effect, which uh, I'm not ruling out here, but uh, there must be something like that. This is G of R uh, correlation length starting from the spin site. So it doesn't grow that rapidly. So it has to do more. So, so there must be some other background elastic effect which uh, has to be taken care of. So then we repeated also for a 3D system, but uh, let me now come to the experiment. Okay. So, so as this, uh, the concept is uh, an, uh, a simpler concept in the sense that uh, you can take your favorite liquid and add uh, an appropriate uh, liquid which has bigger diameter and then look for uh, changes in your relaxation profile and then redo this analysis and ask this question, uh, am I getting something useful? So this is exactly what we did. We took uh, glycerol and uh, sorbitol as, a pure, as, as uh, my soft spinning particle. Sorbitols are at least twice bigger than the glycerol uh, particles. So we repeated the same thing with glucose and I will show that they give the same result. So this is uh, the dielectric loss and this is the dielectric uh, constant which is uh, renormalized to be between 0 and 1 because I need an e effective or equivalent correlation function which where I can take a numerical derivative. So, <clears throat> so now then we, uh, this the black data is for pure uh, glycerol. Then I add 5% sorbitol, 7.5%. 10%, 15%. So once I have this data, I can take a numerical derivative and compute uh, the spinning susceptibility, okay? Which apart from uh, this 5% sorbitol data, more all, almost all other uh, correlation functions are on top of each other, more or less. So, so this is an important criteria because if it depends on the pinning, uh, the amount of sorbitol that you have, then this susceptibility is not the correct susceptibility. So I cannot uh, have a different peak height because then I will be measuring different, different volume. And this tells you that uh, in all these occasions, you are actually computing the same volume. And uh, so, th this, this so that means this, uh, the scaling argument that I have given is not contradicting it. So I cannot prove that this is uh, uh, beyond doubt computing a static correlation, but I can uh, suggest that uh, the scaling argument that I, I have uh, proposed this data is not contradicting it, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so then, uh, so then, uh, so this is also another uh, test that, uh, so this uh, vertical lines, so this is for various temperatures, keeping uh, the orbital concentration same. And uh, so these vertical lines are the relaxation time, and it indeed uh, picks up at the typical structural relaxation time. And then you can ask this, uh, okay, you can compute this peak heights okay, and take one third power of it and plot. So that should be the length scale that uh, the scaling theory suggests. So this is the length scale as a function of uh, temperature. And these are all the data for, uh, so there are various uh, pinning, uh, various amount of sorbitol that has been used. And, <clears throat> and you see that all of them gives you uh, more or less the same length scale. And uh, these black circles, are the data that is computed from uh, fifth order nonlinear susceptibility. 
this is the, the science paper that I, uh, so this is 2015 paper. And uh, this we, uh, I feel that this is in, in remarkable agreement with, uh, with those uh, results. So, so the story does not end here, because this is only the pinning susceptibility and using that I computed uh, the, the static link scale. But I can recheck it, whether I am getting the same correlation if I now look at relaxation time, which is independent of any of this analysis. Okay? So, so this is the relaxation time data as a function of uh, sorbitol concentration. And this is for various temperatures. Okay? And uh, so you can actually, uh, for zero uh, sorbitol concentration or pure glycerol data, you can actually scale it. So this is the, the y axis is scaled and the x axis is not scaled. So scaling analysis tells you that uh, if you choose your, uh, there is a static length scale or static correlation volume that you can compute, which should be able to collapse your data. And so this is the correlation length that we, uh, so we use that correlation length and then I can collapse the relaxation time data. So this include uh, pure glycerol uh, uh, with uh, various amount of sorbitol concentration. And you see that there is a, an interesting way to understand uh, super cool liquid mixtures without ad hocly define various quantities. For example, like uh, there is, a, this is, this is often asked. If I add certain uh, concentration of other uh, liquid, how much will be the change in uh, Tg? Okay? So that you typically fit it and do something. But uh, this suggests that uh, now I will be able to predict all of that. Uh, just by knowing uh, the information of the pure uh, liquid. Okay? So we, were, we did not stop there. We asked, uh, we looked at in the literature and found that there are a lot of data, particularly uh, this work of Renko Record. So there are a lot of uh, experimental data which was available on glycerol and sorbitol mixture. We included all of them here along with our uh, data and uh, using the same correlation length. I just plotted it once more and it collapses all of them. Okay? And over a very big uh, window of uh, relaxation time, which is uh, basically reassuring that our experiment uh, was not faulty. And then the next question is that uh, in the pinning uh, susceptibility concept, uh, we only, only talk about uh, changing size of the particle and I do not ask any other question. So instead of sorbitol, if I add something else, as long as they do not uh, react and they are, uh, they, they are miscible, then uh, I should be able to use any other uh, uh, liquid, which is bigger uh, particle diameter and I should get back the same information, not a different uh, length scale. So this is repeated with, with, with uh, glucose okay and uh, so here you have both glucose and sorbitol data together along with uh, this uh, fifth order nonlinear susceptibility relaxation uh, fifth order nonlinear susceptibility analysis and uh, it's really uh, amazing to see that uh, indeed you pick up the same correlation length but i want to again claim that i am not proving that uh, the random first order transition theory or any other theory is correct I'm just proposing a way to compute those length scales. And this length scale uh, may have effect, may not have effect, but, but this is important to compute them first. And uh, th this is a teaser because uh, we uh, thought of uh, putting it uh, to provoke people. So what uh, random first order transition theory tells you that relaxation time will be a function of uh, this correlation length uh, divided by KBT. And so this is the raw data. I, I agree that uh, it's not very different. Uh, so is the departure from the Arrhenius behavior is not drastic. So you, you, here we have two sets of data. One is for glycerol and another one is for butanol. And, uh, but this, uh, if you in introduce the correlation length, although the length uh, does not change by a huge factor within uh, this window of temperature, but if you put this length scale, uh, then it uh, actually, uh, uh, proves that uh, indeed this kind of uh, relation seems to be valid with uh, psi chosen to be 1. Okay. And uh, no, it is already a straight line and uh, that is what uh, this suggests. So then it will bend basically. If you, D by 2, 1.5. Yeah. But that means you are taking RA40 too seriously then. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> yeah.
No, but then it will precipitate. So you, yeah, you need to have something which uh, is going to mix. You don't want uh, them to be. But if you, you can have a small colloid with large colloid. You don't need uh, much of information. You just need to do uh, the dynamic life scattering, and uh, that's it. And uh, you don't have to go into the details of how it is. As long as they mix well, uh, and then you compute uh, relaxation profile of your original system and added uh, and with this uh, added uh, system, that's it. Then you should be able to do it and compute it. Yeah. Okay. So this is something which has been also done uh, in, a, in a dimer polymer mixture uh, by this uh, Japanese group and they do claim that uh, the effects are pinning like. So polymer uh, in this uh, polymer as uh, the lower concentration system here, the polymer, so this, they are changing polymer concentration and they do see that uh, the kind of physics that you see in the pin system is somewhat similar here. But they did not go into the details of uh, computing various quantities and uh, yeah, but so I want to end with uh, this interesting study, which is uh, by uh, Mandadapu and Garahan with uh, the student. So they try to do similar analysis <coughs> of understanding uh, behavior of liquid mixtures. Okay, and uh, so this is within uh, dynamical facilitation theory. This is uh, so what they did. So they took uh, the prediction of dynamical facilitation theory, which suggests that your log tau alpha will have a parabolic uh, relation with uh, the inverse temperature. And, uh, <clears throat> but to understand liquid mixture, they need to introduce uh, a basically a modified coupling where X is the uh, amount of uh, one of the concentrations of the particle or concentration of the liquid. And, uh, and this J1 and J0 are known from the pure uh, liquid itself. So you just vary X and you should be able to uh, understand the liquid mixture completely. So in many of the liquid mixture they looked at, they could be able to do it. And then they themselves uh, highlighted that uh, sorbitol and glycerol mixture is something which does not uh, fall into this category. Okay. And uh, so if you look at uh, even their uh, statement that sorbitol and glycerol has too much difference in their Tg, which you cannot capture using uh, such a thing. And they went on to modify this by introducing many other parameters. But once you introduce too many parameters, you should be able to adjust it and fit it more or less. So they need to introduce uh, different effective temperature for uh, glycerol and sorbitol in equilibrium, which is a, a bit uh, uh, too much to ask. But uh, so what uh, I personally feel is that so this is the regime where uh, this heavy particle started to behave like a pin particle. And I think the physics is probably controlled by the pinning like concept rather than just simple liquid mixture of equal masses and equal or equal uh, uh, diffusion constants. This, yeah, so this is the low temperature part, yes. Yes. So in the low temperature uh, part of it, you should be uh, this spinning like uh, approach will be much better. But only if your uh, basically the molecular sizes are different. So most of the data which you fall here, they are not too different. Okay. But uh, for, for the sorbitol and the glycerol case, it is different. It's a factor of two difference in the effective uh, diameter. So so I will uh, stop here. And uh, these are the people uh, who contributed uh, in, in the theories uh, and the simulation and uh, this guy is uh, helped in, in an experiment <clears throat> and I want to thank uh, TIFR uh, and DAE for uh, money and uh, co-research grant and Sarnojayanti Fellowship from SERB and DST for uh, further support and thank you for your attention. Vince? Uh, hi, nice talk. Uh, so I'm confused about one thing. Yeah. So uh, when you're defining this uh, overlap function and uh, subtracting the pin fraction, with uh, increasing pinning fraction, you will go towards this A3 critical point. Uh, 
uh, will if you subtract, will you be able to capture this, or you are in that uh, perturbation regime, so you don't we care about it? We are still in that. the low pinning regime in some sense. Okay. So A3 appears at what pinning? Some typical like around 30 percent. Yeah, close to that. Yeah. So we never went beyond uh, 10, 12 percent. Okay, but uh, so if you subtract, is, can you still capture? I'm confused. Uh, we are not subtracting. We are basically taking uh, uh, relaxation of the mobile particles. Hmm. So, in some, so, we are not even counting them in, in the calculation. But when you do soft pinning, uh, they are all there. And uh, now you can ask whether uh, this random pinning and soft pinning, they belong to the same category or not. That's a different question. It's really interesting to see that actually. Yeah. yeah. The yes. but, uh, but the other problem is that if you uh, add too much of pin particle, then your uh, glass won't be glass anymore. So, then you go into a regime called uh, low-range gas, yeah. which is very different. So, but we are still uh, somewhat in the in the small pinning concentration. But what is funny is that even uh, we went up to 10, 12 percent, which is quite high. So, all of these arguments would only hold in a uh, few percent, maybe uh, up to 4, 5 percent, 6 percent, 10, 7 percent. And uh, there is a the scaling function which is basically proportional to the correlation length, uh, correlation volume. It remains true until uh, up to at least uh, experiment, other experimental data that we extracted from uh, literature went up to 20, 25 percent. And you do see that they still fall into the same curve, which uh, may raise questions, but uh, yeah, but the, I have no understanding of that, why it still remains valid. But this is also true even if you do in simulation. So, simulation uh, you can actually go up to 30 percent. Mm -hmm. And the same scaling analysis we is going to, is, will hold. So this is a bigger surprise for me. Why it is still valid for large pinning concentration? We had a result which maybe is consistent with this. We didn't publish it. This oh. was with Rahul Traco. Um, so. We were trying to understand whether the softness correlation length was a static correlation, you know, match the point to set length, and it did not. It increased more slowly. But we found, and this was just sort of numerology for us, we found that if we looked at very low softness particles, which are pinned, pinned right? yeah, effectively yeah. pinned, yeah, yeah. so we looked at the correlation of a very low softness particle at the origin with softness at distance r, ah, yes. that that correlation like matches the point to set. Yeah, so this so actually yeah, uh, somewhat this explains towards, yeah. that. Yeah, this is suggesting towards that actually. Yeah, okay. It, is, it seems Very to nice. me at least that uh, whenever you have uh, the slow particles which do not move over a typical average time scale, they contribute very significantly in your dynamics. Yeah. And if you can uh, take the separate them out clearly, then I think more information can be extracted. Is the, so the average person, average uh, particle has to be removed from your dynamics. Yeah. The static correlation becomes much better. Yeah. So there are some masking. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, this is a question about the earlier parts of your talk when you were reviewing your earlier work. When, yeah. So it went kind of fast for me. Uh, did I understand right that you think there is no correlation between the dynamic correlation length and what you get from 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 chi four yeah. from chi four and the relaxation time. Yes. Did I hear right? Yeah. Okay. So we should talk then because we find actually that you can correlate them. Okay. Uh, in yeah. in three different experiment, very different experimental systems. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea showed a movie for one, and the trick is to make the relaxation time dimensionless in a way that depends on the system, but but more importantly to convert uh, the peak of chi four to the number of particles involved in the rearrangements. Uh -huh. And we have a prescription for doing that, which which we published, but hasn't sort of caught on. People aren't okay. too much aware of it, <laughs> yeah. I think. But it basically, it involves um, factors of the overlap parameter for particles in fast regions, particles in slow regions, mm -hmm. and uh, the value also at the peak. So if you combine those things, mm -hmm. um, the, the number of particles involved in the rearranging regions isn't actually directly proportional to uh, the number of particles. So chi-4 and n what I call n star, not directly proportional. But when you do all these things, then things straighten out and you actually get a one-third power law between n star and the relaxation okay, time. Okay, this I, I, I probably missed. I, I, I would like to see that actually. Okay. Yeah. 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 But the other point will be this uh, system size dependence will be very tricky to explain, at least within simulation. Yeah. 
So that uh, the learning skill that you need to collapse relaxation time is way smaller than what you need for Chi-4. So Chi-4 you have a very significant growth of the learning skill. So the other interesting part is that if you have systems where there are some local structures that are appearing, for example, you can have icosohedra in, in 3D and two dimension you can have some local hexatic order, then these two combines and become exactly same. So the static and the dynamic will be actually following each other. So there is also work by uh, Jill Tarju and uh, I think uh, Uchi, uh, I forgot the, the first name. So there they looked at on a curved surface and uh, by changing the curvature of, uh, of, the, of the metric, they were able to show that you can go from, uh, you can see, clearly see the decoupling between static and dynamic lengths. So in the curved surface, uh, the icosohedra pack much better and there the static and, uh, and the dynamic will get, will be proportional to each other directly. And in a flat surface because of uh, frustration, they will be decoupled completely. But uh, this connection to uh, relaxation time and the, the heterogeneity length scale will be something we we'll yeah, like to discuss with you. To be continued. Yeah. To be continued. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, so in in if in case if the this spinning sites and the glass forming liquid, if they interact weakly, let's say by hydrogen bonding, so do you expect the correlation lengths to change uh, very significantly? So, so we haven't looked at hydrogen bonding uh, situation directly, but uh, even if the pin particle and your uh, the medium interact with any interaction that you choose, it doesn't affect. So we also tested that. So we varied the interaction between this bigger particle with the, the host or the medium, and you can change it by factor of two, three, but you still get back the same correlation. So size of the particle you can vary also from uh, 1.4 to 2 to 2.2 uh, 2 times bigger than the host particle. And interaction you change by factor of two, three, nothing changes. You can still get back the same correlation. Okay. Thank you. No, the peering susceptibility when you take derivative, it uh, takes care of all those effects. No, but yeah, you don't want to go to an extreme regime where it, it collapses everything. But I think uh, like we change the, uh, the interaction between pin site and the host by at least factor of two to three and it, it did not change. But I think we need to still do more local calculations to find out whether how this relaxation profile changes from the pinning side. And, uh, and maybe some softness analysis as well. I told you, right, the GR changes. Yeah. The, on this, the pinning uh, side, if we can look at have the, a different kind of, of a, the radial distribution function changes at, at the pinning site, mm. the local values of mm. that. So that will increase, that will actually decrease That softness. will decrease, decrease the softness, softness yeah. the mobility also of the particle. That we have seen already. If there is no more question, let's thank our speaker again. Okay.